So we've looked at the composition of our energy sources. What about the energy scale? How much of these sources? If you look here, the beige is forests and trees from the 1800s. In the early 1800s, we didn't use any fossil fuels. It was all trees. The east coast of the United States was pretty much clear cut if you look at pictures from the 1830s and 40s. Then we use the gray bar, which is coal. The green is oil. The red natural gas, the blue hydroelectric, the green nuclear, and the yellow, other renewables like solar and wind. And you can see our access to energy over this 220 year period has generally been higher and sharply higher. So, so what does this really mean in terms of consumption? Do you have to ever think about how many Big Macs did you eat yesterday? Well, you probably didn't eat any, or if you ate one, you ate one. But in your body, you ate around 3,000 calories worth of energy, which is equal to six Big Macs. That's endosomatic, in-the-body consumption. But most of our energy is consumed outside the body, exosomatically. And in that case, you, being an average American, ate over 400 Big Macs worth of primary energy yesterday. Or, in terms of a college student, calorically that works out to 578 packages of, of ramen noodles. So, let's take a step back. What do these two creatures have in common? This is Australopithecus, a several million year old pre-hominid, one of our ancestors. And the answer is, they both generate around 100 watts of metabolic power per day. That's about equal to one incandescent 100 watt light bulb running continuously. Now, let's look at historically what the trajectory of human energy use was. Back in Australopithecus time, we used one light bulb and that was all the food that we needed. 2,900 kcals a day, all in food. Then Homo erectus later on used a little bit of fire for heat and storytelling and other things. A couple thousand years ago, we had primitive agriculture, which ended up being 600 watts of total power. Back in the 19th century, the modern agriculture, we added some additional transportation, commerce, industry, and then we got to Homo industrialis, kind of 1970s level America, where we had a wider food system, more transportation, more industry, and now North America, we've attained Homo technologicus, for Americans, that's 100 light bulbs or 10,000 watts. For Canadians, it's 120 light bulbs or 12,000 watts. We have a massive, massive exosomatic surplus underpinning our daily lifestyles. The average American currently has 100 light bulbs running all the time to provide his or her energy services. And this is supported by the equivalent of 57 barrels of direct oil equivalent use per American per year. And plus we import another 15 to 20 barrels of oil embodied in the stuff we buy at Walmart that was made in China. Or equivalently, this works out to 25,000 pounds of coal of primary energy use per American. So if you add up all these light bulbs, we effectively aren't the energy metabolism of a hominid Australopithecus or 200 pound American. We have the metabolism of a 30 ton animal. And how does this compare to the rest of the world? Well, the United States uses approximately four times the energy as the world average. Uh, you can see Canada is over five times the world average. And how does this compare to our ancestors? Well, this moonshot in primary energy consumption has largely happened in the past century. Relative to the average person alive in 1850, the average person alive today uses nine times the energy. So, if we consider 100 light bulbs as the metabolic footprint of the average American, the average human alive uses 25 light bulbs. And the average human alive 150 years ago only had three light bulbs of primary energy, even though we didn't have light bulbs then. That was their energy footprint. So we use four times the energy of the average human and 36 times the energy from our great, great, great grandparents' generation. So in addition to color and ethnic advantages that we frequently discuss in the media, should we ever consider energy privilege? Given what we've already seen, what energy accomplishes for us, the USA has used more energy in the past 20 years, the past 50 years, 
the past 200 years since the dawn of time than any other country. Is this energy privilege something that we should incorporate in our societal discussions? Finally, the scale of our energy ascent not only has disproportionate benefits to various human demographics, but it has other impacts as well, some of which you undoubtedly have heard about in the news. So energy not only gives us amazing benefits, but it also has large impacts on the environment, which will be the topic of the next video.